I remember going to mass at Fort Bragg and saying, Jesus, what the hell are you doing? Do you want this or not? Because I don't. I'm just being faithful, but I don't actually want this. So if you do, you got to do it or not. Just stop jerking me around. And I got the spiritual equivalent of, all right, hold my beer and watch this. I was born in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, but I grew up in Katy, outside of Houston. And I had a faithful Catholic family. And so I was raised in the faith. But at some point, that's not enough. At some point, you have to actually decide, I want to be Catholic. The time that really mattered for me was my time at West Point. That was the first place where I ever had to decide, okay, am I going to Mass or not? Thanks be to God, I went. I think Mary had something to do with that. I know my mom has been praying for me every day by name for my entire life, and I'm sure those graces trickled down. Part of it too is they had cookies, and it was the one hour a week where you just weren't getting yelled at. There was a really good priest there, Father Matt. He had graduated from West Point in 86 and commissioned into the Army Infantry, and then felt a call afterwards and, and came back as a priest. And he was all man and all priest. And there's something attractive about that. And so I wanted to be like him. My second year there, my yuck year is what they call it, sophomore year, uh, focus missionaries showed up. They had a joy that nobody else had. They had a, a love and a peace that nobody had. And it was very clear as soon as you talked to them, it was because of Jesus Christ. And that holiness was attractive. And so I was attracted to it and I started hanging out with them, especially one of them, Pete. He shared the gospel with me one-on-one -on -one in a way that I just either hadn't heard before or, or more likely I just hadn't been paying attention. But to have a man with authority in my life say, hey, this is the truth, do you believe it? And I started just taking everything that they could give me uh, and then giving it to others as well. And one of those things that they gave me was the gift of Marian consecration. Mary showed up in a big way. I don't remember how this happened, but I do know that at some point <laughs> before I graduated, I did Marian consecration. This is my class ring. And I was not a holy guy, but for some reason I had totus tuus inscribed on the inside of this. And I, I still don't remember why I did that, but I did. Yeah, and, and Mary, she came into my life in that way. And, and the great thing about Mary is when you, when you give her a little bit, like a good mom, she pretends that you were even more generous with her than maybe you intended to be. And she started working on me. And during that time was the first time I ever considered, maybe I should go be a priest. The funny thing is I didn't want to be. Uh, I was out of a sense of duty that I was asking that question, right? West Point's motto is duty, honor, country. And that was very much a part of me and still is. And so I went on some discernment retreats, but I didn't want to be there. It was just, okay, I'm Catholic and I'm taking my faith seriously now. So I guess I got to ask this question. And thanks be to God, Jesus was, was very generous to me and said, no, don't go to seminary. And I said, great, because I don't want to. <laughs> I kind of moved on with my life. I started praying the rosary. I started praying the rosary every day. At the time, I was not looking to date. I was intentionally on a dating fast. I also was intentionally not thinking about any other vocation stuff. I was trying to just be a good platoon leader, be a good lieutenant, be a good member of my parish, be a good friend of my friends. And in that context, the Lord moved um, and Mary hooked it up. I was at platoon live fire. So 40 guys, me in charge, real bullets, real grenades, and the certifying exercise um, where I get to prove that I actually know what I'm doing. So I was out in the woods and I get this text, I, you know, it's on my flick and, um, it's a friend of mine and she texts me. She says, Bill, uh, are you single? Cause if you are, I have a friend that I want to set you up with. Uh, and that was a scary text <laughs> and I didn't respond for about a week and I was still in the field training, but, uh, but I came back and, and I prayed about it and yeah, Mary was going to allow it. And so I, I said, okay, um, yeah, and it's also not something you really say no to. Right. And so I took this girl on a date. Her name was Allison. That was the best holiest, healthiest relationship I've ever been in my entire life. So we just started going to mass together um, and it was great. And at the time I was being invested in by a, a senior officer at Fort Bragg. When I started dating Allison, his wife kind of started investing in her. We kind of were dating in the context of their family, you know, that community. And it was, it was just so good. And it was very clear. And I remember praying like Jesus and Mary, like, thank you so much. Like I was waiting for you to move and you moved and you brought this girl into my life and you're blessing it. And it's got your fingerprints all over it. And I kind of thought that was going to be it. What happened is, well, Allison was holier than me. And I think she just had kind of this sense that as she got to know me, that maybe the Lord was calling me to something else. And she didn't say anything to me about it, but she just started praying for me. And there's power in a holy praying woman. And so she went on my behalf to Jesus by name every day. 
saying, Lord, what do you want from Bill? What do you want from me? Because we want to be faithful to that, but we just need to know. And then something happened. I was away on a retreat one weekend, and I actually left the retreat early because I decided it sucked and that I liked Allison better. <laughs> and so uh, I went uh, to go surprise her at Mass. And that same weekend, she'd been praying in an even more specific and intentional way. Lord, please, it's been a few weeks. We need to hear from you. What, what do you want? Because we want to do it. And so on the weekend where I wasn't supposed to be there, but I was, and where she'd been praying like that, it just so happened it was Vocation Sunday. And that all three readings were about responding to God's call. The first reading was the call of Samuel. I don't remember the second, but then the gospel was the call of Simon Peter, Andrew, James, and John. And then the homily was the yearly be a priest recruiting pitch. And not only did the priest there, Father Marlin, give his pitch, not only did he call out the guys and say, guys, you need to go do this, he also called out the women. And he said, women, if there's a guy in your life that the Lord has his hand on, you need to help him figure it out. Alice and I were holding hands during that homily. And when she heard that, she was thinking, man, I got to drop this guy's hand. She, she didn't, but that's what was going through her mind. And so I took her out on a date later that week. And she kind of stops me as we're driving. And she says, Bill, I know you heard that homily. What did you hear? And that's all she asked. And so, you know, I, I tell her, well, hey, I've thought about being a priest before. Uh, I've discerned it twice. And I, the Lord said no. And, and that, like, that lines up with my desires, that lines up with my heart. Um, so I'm not really too interested in this, but I mean, we can pray about it, I guess, right? And so we start praying. I had a spiritual director and I was on the phone with my spiritual director, who at the time says, Bill, I can't make you do this, but I think because of what you're telling me and the fruit of your prayer uh, and what's happened in your life that you need to go talk to a vocations director. I talked to Allison. I said, hey, look, I don't want to be a priest. I don't want to go to seminary. I'm in love with you. The Lord is clearly blessing our relationship. But I think I need to just make this call because he's asking me to, and hopefully the Lord is just going to end it there, and then we'll know. So I called my vocations director for, for Houston, and I tell him, Father, I don't want to be a priest. I don't want to go to your seminary. Uh, I'm on this phone call with you as an act of obedience, and I kind of hope it ends here. And he just kind of laughed, and we had a conversation. We talked again a little bit later, and he invited me to apply. I talked to Allison, and I said, look, I still don't want to do this, but it looks like the Lord is like opening like an invitation for me to apply. So we need to like be faithful to this discernment, and they'll probably just tell me no. And so we were praying through it together. We were praying the rosary together. And, and I tried to use the fact that we were dating to sabotage my application, right? I, 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 on every form and every interview, I told them, I don't want to be a priest and I'm dating a girl and it's going great and she's beautiful and she's Catholic and she's holy. So please don't accept me. And wouldn't you know, I got accepted uh, conditionally, right on the condition that I would break up with Allison. And I couldn't believe it. I started asking other questions. Uh, to the army about if this was even possible. Because at the time, I was only three years into a five-year contract. But the infantry branch said no. They said, Bill, sorry, Lieutenant Waters, uh, we own you and you don't get to go. We're not gonna let you go to seminary. So finish your two years and then maybe we can talk. I remember going to mass the day I heard that and saying, Jesus, what the hell are you doing? Do you want this or not? Because I don't. I'm just being faithful, you know, but I don't actually want this. So if you do, you got to do it or not. Just, just stop jerking me around. And I got the spiritual equivalent of, all right, hold my beer and watch this. Because at that mass at Fort Bragg, I was sitting next to a nice lady named Miss Lorelei. And she knew Allison. I think they were running partners. And, and she had heard some of the story. And so she asks me, Hey, Bill, how's it going? And I tell her, well, at this point, I'm accepted in the seminary. I'm accepted in the chaplain corps, but the infantry branch is telling me no, and it's not looking good, so it's probably not going to happen. And she says very sweetly, Bill, my husband is the force comm commander, a four-star general. Here's his card, and he's going to help you out. And I couldn't believe it. And so I go back to my battalion, and nobody believes it either, but I show them the card, and so they believe me. I build this email, I tell my boss and my battalion commander, hey sir, just so you know, I'm about to jump seven levels of the chain of command. And he was supportive, which, which is crazy, that doesn't happen, right? They usually hate that. And finger trembling, I send this email off, you know, to this general, and, and he emails me back the next day and says, hey, the Army G1 is telling me we can get you there, let me know if you have any problems. And that was it. And the funny thing is, uh, I mean, that was a miracle. 
And I, and I started seeing all these miracles happening where the Lord was opening all the doors and rolling out the red carpet. And I didn't even want to go yet. I still wasn't sure that this was the move. And so to see all this happening made me really mad at the Lord. I went to the church on a Saturday. I waited for the vigil to end. As everybody was walking out, I walked in. I waited until I was the last guy in, in the chapel. And I went up to the tabernacle and I started screaming, Jesus, what are you doing? Why would you call me to one place, but put my heart in another place? Because I know that I want to be a father, that I want to have children, that I want to raise a family. Why would you put that on my heart, but then call me somewhere else? That doesn't seem fair. That doesn't seem like something a good God would do. And I'm pissed off at you. So you got to, you need to explain yourself for an hour. And by the end of that hour, he gave me a prayer to pray, which was, Lord, you got to either change my call or you got to change my heart. Because right now they don't line up. In that context, I finally got the call that it was all going to go through and all I had to do was say yes. And I was at my buddy's house. I said, all right, Father, look, I get it. I can see what God's doing. I'll go because God's God and I'm not. So if he wants me to go, I'll go. But I'm going to be pissed off about it. And I'm still going to be praying that prayer, change my call or change my heart because I'm not there. And I was looking for every opportunity to leave. My classmates saw it. It discouraged them to see that I was not in it to win it. And the funny thing is that first year at seminary was the best year of my life. I was wrong about everything. I was completely, perfectly, and incandescently happy. You know, Mary was just showering me with grace upon grace, and I didn't want to accept it. One of those graces was my friend Keenan, uh, who has a crazy testimony about praying four rosaries a day that changed his life, that changed his brother's life. And the testimony was convincing enough, and I guess Mary had started to work on my heart enough where I said, okay, I'm gonna try this too. You've convinced me. And so I started praying four rosaries a day there at the beginning of the seminary. And I was still mad, but I was praying. Uh, and the funny thing is, I wasn't really praying that prayer, change my call or change my heart faithfully, because I didn't want him to change my heart. And I knew he wasn't going to change the call. But then finally something happened. I was in the chapel, and this was just a few months ago. So in, into my second year, I was in the chapel one Sunday afternoon. I had finished my fourth rosary of the day, and the great graces come at the fourth rosary. Mary honors when you finish. And I can't describe it, except it was the great grace to finally be able to say that I want to be a priest. She changed my heart. Mary changed my heart. And I could finally say that I wanted to be a priest. And I could see that what was happening was good to me and that the Lord loved me and that what was happening was an expression of his love. I was also struck with horror at my own sinfulness at having lived with a divided heart for so long, at having abused the trust of the church, at having abused uh, the trust of my formators, the trust of the seminary, the trust that the Lord had put in me. And I realized that if I tried to be a priest on my own, that I was going to be a bad priest. But once and again, Mary came to the rescue <laughs> and she gave me a new prayer to pray because now finally my heart and my call did line up. She said, ask my son to hide you in my womb because that's the only place you're going to be a holy priest and a great saint for the church. And the day that she gave that prayer to me, I started wearing this miraculous medal because she changed my heart and she gave me a new prayer to pray and she confirmed my vocation. And I wear this every day to remind myself and others of that. And I pray that prayer faithfully every day. Mary, allow me to be hidden in your womb because that's the place I'm going to become a holy priest and a great saint for the church. Because her womb is the place where the blood of Jesus by which we're saved can flow through us. And then she confirmed this powerfully with two miracles that she let me see. I've been doing ministry with a couple of homeless guys outside the seminary, just kind of unofficial thing. They were there and I had extra food. They feed us really well at St. Mary's. And I felt like I'd be a hypocrite if I didn't take care of them. So I started bringing them food. And neither of them were Catholic. Their two names were Joe and Kiwi. Uh, Kiwi's from New Zealand. Uh, Joe's a Hispanic guy. Neither of them had a relationship with Mary. But I'd come around and I'd bring them food and they would let me pray the Hail Mary with them. And then right at the time that Mary confirmed my vocation and changed my heart, she worked powerfully miracles in their lives to make sure I didn't miss it. The first one happened with Kiwi. Kiwi was about 50. He was actually a very high functioning homeless guy. <laughs> he just had made a lot of bad decisions. One of those is he had a daughter named Aneka and abandoned her when she was six. Neka had a great faith. The Lord had saved her marriage and she wanted to offer the forgiveness that the Lord offered her to her father, but she didn't know where she was. And so she spent 15 years looking for Kiwi, her father, who had abandoned her. And right when I needed to see a miracle, Mary helped her find Kiwi in Houston. And so she told him, hey, I know you're homeless. Come and live with us in New Zealand. And Mary gave Kiwi the grace to say yes to that. And I'm happy to say he's there and he's living with his family and he's reunited. And he has grandchildren that he didn't even know existed. And as that happened, he had a massive conversion. 
he realized, oh man, the gospel's true. Jesus is real and Mary loves me and she did this. Like he, he knew it was Mary. His friend Joe saw what Mary did to Kiwi. Joe says to me, Bill, I wanna have a devotion to Mary. So every time you come bring me food, I wanna pray a rosary with you. Homeless guys don't say that. Homeless guys say, give me money for crack. I said, okay, would love to do that. And he says, can we start today? And it was my fourth rosary of the day. And remember the great graces come at the fourth rosary. And so I'm kneeling there under the interstate with him. I'm praying the first glorious mystery. He doesn't know any of the prayers yet, so he's just listening. As I'm praying, something happens to him and I can see it in his face. And I finish this mystery and he says to me, Bill, I just heard somebody speak to me. And I say, who was it? And he says, I don't know, but it was beautiful. And it was a woman. And I say, Joe, I think that was Mary. And he says, I think you're right. And so we both got excited. And as I'm praying the second glorious mystery, he says, Bill, I heard her again. And she says that she loves me. And after we finish, he says, Bill, I think Jesus just let Mary do that to me. And I said, Joe, I think you're right. And he says, Joe's the name of my brother who died. And when he died, I took his name. But Mary just helped me realize that I should use my own name. So you need to call me Joel. And I said, all right, Joel, I will. Joel had cancer, bone cancer. And he said, my cancer is gone. He went in to a hospital here in Houston. The doctor took some of his blood, ran some tests, and then came back in and said, hey, we need to run those tests again. Can I have some more blood? Ran the tests again, compared it with two other doctors, and then came back in and said, hey, we can't explain it, but there's no trace of your cancer. He then asked, did something happen to you? Did you change something? To which Joel replies, kind of sarcastically, because he's a funny guy. He says, well, I'm still doing crack, but I started praying the rosary. <laughs> and the doctor says, well, I can't explain it. Since that day, Joel has also worn his miraculous medal every day. And he's had a massive conversion too. He already believed in the Lord, but now he's got a great devotion to Mary. He never touched crack again. His drug dealer got jealous because he thought he was buying for another supplier, but he wasn't. He just had a new supplier, Mary. The other homeless guys in the corner have seen what happened to Joel. Some of them like it, some of them don't, because Joel doesn't let them smoke and drink with him anymore. And he's gone religious. And I share this with you so that you might know what Mary did in my life. Uh, I know that she changed my heart, that she worked two miracles in front of my eyes to let me see it, to confirm this vocation, to help me know that the only way I'm gonna be a holy priest and a great saint is through her. And so I intend to pray the four rosaries every day of my life until I die, and I hope you'll do the same. So let's finish in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.